next on National Space Day, which is today. I spoke with Union Minister for Space, Dr. Jitain Singh, on India's milestones at the Global Space Race, the progress of ISRO's space missions, and how India's rise has been a game changer in space technology innovation. Listen. Mr. Jitain Singh, thank you so much for joining in on CNN News 18. Now, thanks to the historic milestone when the Chandrayaan-3 mission completed a soft landing on the moon in 2023, we are now celebrating 23rd of August as the National Space Day. In hindsight, don't you think it was a watershed moment in India's quest for space exploration? No, absolutely, absolutely. And I think also it was a turning point in the journey of India's space sector. And uh, I think the most uh, beautiful part of it, the most beautiful feature of uh, this achievement was that even those who do not have a direct stake with the space sector or do not, are not much interested uh, in the space sector also felt interested in watching this event because it gave a sense of esteem to each and every Indian citizen uh, regardless of however much he was connected with the space sector or not. So to that extent, I think the event was uh, watched so widely and as I said even on that day, I think the only other event which is uh, so keenly watched is perhaps a cricket match happening between India and Pakistan. And at the same time, it also generated a lot of interest uh, among the youngsters, uh, particularly to think of the options of startups in the science sector, not only confined to the space, but also in the other science streams. and. Uh, it also evidently placed India as one of the frontline nations in the comedy of world. Mr. Singh, whether it's Chandrayaan 3's lunar triumph or the awe-inspiring Aditya L1 solar mission, how do you assess India's cosmic strides so far? No, I think uh, India has uh, never had a dearth of talent or a dearth of uh, scientific human potential. If you see the pictures in the archives, you will find Sarabhai carrying some of his uh, goods on the carriage of the bicycle. I mean, that was the kind of commitment and resolve uh, even to work despite the constraints of resources. So, what was lacking perhaps was an enabling milieu which is expected to be provided by the policy makers of the country, which is expected to be provided largely by the political leadership of the country and that deficiency was made up by Prime Minister Modi. Well, about four years back, he took a very historic and a very revolutionary decision, breaking all the taboos of the past. He unlocked the doors of Sri Harikota and opened up the India space sector to private players. And since then, there has been a quantum leap. There has been overnight increase in the growth of the space economy as well. For example, in just about eight months beginning from 1st of April to 31st of December 2023, we had a private investment of as much as more than 1,000 rupees, one, uh, rupees 1,000 crore. Uh, we just had one digit startup in the space sector till about three years back. It's now gone almost to 300. We have, and some of these startups are the world potential. Uh, they have earned for themselves reputation and also doing very well as entrepreneurs. So, this one decision taken by Prime Minister Modi, which unfortunately was not taken by the earlier governments for the last 70 years because they continued to function in a status quo manner and allowed the space sector's uh, human resource and human talent to suffer the constraint of uh, an enabling uh, atmosphere. But once that was let out by Prime Minister Modi's decision, you see the, 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 the results are miraculous today. All right. Mr. Singh, ISRO is also working on a deadline to set up India's first space station by 2035 and land the first Indian on the moon by 2040. Tell us how India is expanding its space program and the role of private players, considering you also mentioned private players. See, uh, I think one heartening feature is that uh, we are not behind anybody today. In most of the science sectors, and more so in the space sector that we are discussing right now. Our space journey began relatively late. ISRO was born in the year 1969, which is remembered as the year when Americans landed the first human being on the surface of Moon Neil Armstrong. But today, half a century later, we are the first country to have landed on the South Pole of the Moon. We are the first country to have reached Mars in the first attempt. And even from Chandrayaan-3, 
the cues, the findings that are being obtained are being eagerly awaited by NASA and the other leading agencies of the world which started out much earlier than us which means that today India is not only at par with them, we are also moving ahead of them in a position to give them leads, give them cues. So that gives us a sense of confidence. Having said that, the other part is, which is I think quite exclusive to India's space sector is that we have no longer confined ourselves simply to the launch of rockets. And if you recall somewhere in 2015, 2016, you know, under this present government itself, a decision was taken to have a, a, a brainstorming marathon interaction between the space scientists and the representatives of the different ministries. As a result of which today space technology has virtually entered every Indian household and every sectoral development, whether it's the smart cities, whether it's the fisheries, whether it's the agriculture, whether it's the farming, whether it's the health care, uh, whether it's the Swamitva program which is being cited all over the world. So space technology today is playing an important role in overall developmental story of India. So I think that is one of the biggest hallmarks which is something different from many other countries of the world. Mr. Singh, considering India celebrating this first National Space Day today with the theme Touching Lives While Touching the Moon, India Space Saga, tell us more about this theme. No, that's because, see, Prime Minister has laid down before us the target 2047 when India celebrates the 100 years of its, its independence and India also observes the century. So, and when we envisage that India would have reached a world pedestal and I'm sure that's going to happen because India's economy stands at number four today, uh, sorry, number five today, will go on to four, three and gradually rise up. But where is that value addition going to come from? Obviously, that value addition will come from the sectors which were hitherto either unexplored or underexplored and one of them is going to be space sector. So, in that sense, it gives us the confidence to say that India's space sector is going to contribute hugely, hugely to the growth of India's economy in the years to come. We are, we, we, we hope to be 100 billion dollar by then. We are already 8 billion dollar today and the pace at which this rise is happening is also progressively increasing. And therefore, while on the one hand we touch the moon, as the theme suggests, and have a rise in the sense of esteem in the heart and minds of each of the citizens, at the same time, we are also touching the minds of each of the Indian citizens by making space technology as a means of bringing ease of living in his life. Mr. Singh, you've also announced that an Indian astronaut is likely to fly to the International Space Station. Uh, whether it is NASA or the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, could you share more about India's collaborative capabilities in space exploration? Yeah, to begin with, uh, not necessarily April. What I said was that Indian astronaut, and he's been identified, Wing Commander Shukla, who's now got promoted and is known as Group Captain Shukla, has been identified to accompany his counterparts to the International Space Station. The date has not yet been finalized, but it will be somewhere after the month of October, which means towards the end of this year or maybe the beginning of the next year. And as far as our collaborations are concerned, we are today in a position where we collaborate at an equal platform, not from a position of uh, lesser capabilities. And that's why during Prime Minister Modi's uh, DC visit, Washington DC visit and his bilaterals with President Biden, this suggestion came from the other side that one of the Indian astronauts should accompany them to the International Service Station because that is in a way the recognition of India's talent and the extent to which uh, India can contribute uh, in all such expeditions which were earlier known to be quite alien or new uh, as far as the uh, Indian priorities were concerned. All right. And with that, it's a wrap from my end. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jitain Singh. It was a pleasure to have you here on CNN News 18.